Hey folks, it's time for the Twip Pro Photo Critique number 106. This is Twip. Hey, welcome back to This Week in Photo. It's time for our weekly photo critique session. I'm sitting here remotely and appropriately social distanced from my good <laughs> friend, Mr. <laughs> Troy Miller, who's safely down there in Southern California. I'm up here in Northern California. Hey, Troy, how's it going, man? It's it's good. It's good. I'm uh, I'm hoping to get outside here in a little bit. You know, <laughs> <step out on> the... <laughs> they haven't let you out of that room right there, have they? <laughs> no, no. <laughs> Oh, well, good. Yeah, we uh, we went on a little uh, impromptu, I don't know if it would be illegal, but road trip yesterday. We were a little stir, stir crazy. So I decided to take the S1, my new S1 out and go check out the the abandoned cities that are Oakland, California, San Francisco, California and San Jose, California. So wow, we did that wow. loop and came around and it was unprecedented and you know, a little, a little refreshing, the lack of traffic. I got to tell you. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So Yeah, well, I'm glad everybody else was staying home like they're supposed to. Hey, well, we were in the car. So <laughs> yeah. we yes. were, I mean, you know, if we were homeless living out of our car, we would have been home technically, right? So, right, right, right. So. Yeah, today, today, this is my home. Yeah. yeah, this is my home. So we hung out in the car, didn't leave the car, just drove around and gawked at the emptiness that is the United States of America right now. So Yeah, yeah, it's amazing. Crazy times crazy times but making lemonade from lemons you and i decided to do a critique session that was focused on being stuck at home right yeah so, yeah so the topic of this one was homebound abstracts homebound yeah some, abstracts some good stuff we stuff I, I can't identify <laughs> no which is the point of an abstract right? yeah yeah so, yeah you want to dive in and uh let's yeah let's do it yeah we're ready all right i'm gonna go ahead and share screen the first shot up here is from ernest hallett look at this thing i think that is freaking cool yeah what is that that looks like some sort of deep sea creature with with bioluminescence or something <laughs> <laughs> i know i know it just i mean you know in the sense of pure abstract uh that's it I, I mean i see it maybe like this is a a flutter of some you know bioluminescent insect you know <laughs> caught with a slow shutter like uh, an avatar creature of some kind or another yep um i don't know but i love it and i like the fact that it's not a mirror you know, it's not a mirror image of itself, you know, like somebody just split it or whatever. It's like it's it. Yeah. What is that called? Fractals? It looks yeah. like fractals. Fractals. Yeah. 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 That's exactly what it looks like. It does look like like fractals in there, like just a bunch of colorful repeating patterns that go on in an infinity. It's very cool. Right. It draws you into it, doesn't it? Yes. And it, and it asks the question, like, you know, what are you like? What is that? Mm -hmm. Which I think is is a good uh, property for any image is to make us think about what it is. So, um, Ernest, if you've, uh, if you've got a moment, like g give us a clue. <laughs> Tell us what it is. <laughs> what yeah. that thing is. Yeah. What do you, what do you think the, the, does the border help or take away or add to it? I think the border's a little strong. Um, I think that if it was, you know, maybe three pixels instead of like 10 or something, 10 or 12, I think it would be better and yeah. it doesn't need to be as bright. Yeah. Yeah. But, it is. It is a little, I don't want to say heavy handed, but the your like we always say, your eye goes to the brightest part of the image yeah. and that that border is pretty bright. So maybe it was just, you know, either thinner or toned back a little bit might have been right. Less, right. less heavy handed. Totally agree. Cool. All right. Thank you, Ernest, for that. Next shot is from Alicia. Ooh, I love that. Look at that shot. That's a macro. This is what I'm talking about, man. This is this is this is a shot that you know was somewhere in her house because she's on lockdown like the rest of us. Right. Um, when I the first glance, what what comes to mind when you look at this for the first time? Um, a, like a like a steam wheel or like a train, you know, like a wheel on a train. I saw wagon wheel like from the old west. Or oh, something. okay, yeah, yeah. yeah. Yeah, it definitely fits the theme. Mm -hmm. um, maybe it's off like a model or something of something like that. It, it kind of looks like a fan, though, you know, because mm -hmm. the blades are I, I see now there's a twist in the blades. Yep. Um, Some kind th of turbine. This is, yeah. Yeah. Maybe it is a fan. Uh, I, again, this is one of those super cool abstract things that has just enough recognition for me to relate to it. 
you know, the castle nut. Mm -hmm. Um, but I, I have no idea what the context is. Yeah. So this is cool. This is really cool. Even more abstract. If it is a fan, I'm a fan of this fan. So. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. 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 Good uh, I love maybe. the shallow depth of field. It's this, you know, I, I wonder if that was, the, if that was poster that it, if that's optical, the bokeh. That's not. Uh, that's optical. It's optical. Yeah, that's mm. yeah. And the reason I say that it's optical is because this thing is on an angle, or you know, on a on a diminishing angle from the camera. So the castle nut tip is in focus, and then at the center of the blade is in focus. Yeah. And you know that that makes perfect sense. So I would I would maybe crop a little bit off on the left, right? What do you think? I think a little a little tighter, maybe. Uh, just to pu sort of push the castle nut down into the left lower third kind of thing. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah. 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 Just, just trim it in a little tighter. Yeah. Yeah. But that, yeah, that's nitpicking. I think it's, yep. it's cool well, like it is, but yeah, I like it. And I love the toning. Beautiful toning. Would you go black and white with it? Um, I would try black and white, but this is monochromatic in, in nature. And I think I love the warm tone. I really like things that are warm. So, mm -hmm. Yeah, it's yeah. nice. Yep. It's very nice. Good job, Alicia. I wonder if she edited this with her new Wacom tablet. Mm. Ooh, I don't know. <laughs> I don't know. Probably, probably. All right. Next shot is from Armando. <laughs> you know, I I I loved I love this shot because uh I've been, you know, because I'm home, um, I have emptied every nook and cranny, every cupboard, every box. I'm going through everything and I'm cleaning. And so this feels very much like what I'm doing right now at home. Yeah. So yeah, yeah I did the same thing. I reorganized the entire garage. <laughs> so it's yeah. 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 Very good. Making, um, lemons from, making lemonade from lemons, man. Keep doing it. Yeah. I think the, I think the footer on this, the, on the masking or on the presentation, the matting is, is too heavy. That, that bottom is just too heavy. The chin. So, the chin, the foot, the base. Mm -hmm. Yeah. It's too heavy. I, if, if you were to go like double what the top or the sides are, that'd be fine. Yeah. And the so. shot like this, I think it's a fun, whimsical sort of shot, you know, and I don't know that adding that border at the bottom adds to it. I think if, if the border were equidistant all the way around, like the, the left, right, top, you know, the, about that depth and thickness, I mm -hmm. think that would have been fine for a shot like this. Yeah, and if you're going to make it heavy at all, uh, the bottom's the right place to do it. Just mm -hmm. I think that's just definitely too much. Yeah, yeah. I always think Polaroid, and I think there should be some scribbly text on there. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Uh, yeah. Cool. All right, Armando. Thank you, sir. Next shot up is from Mr. Craig Stampfley. Well, you know, knowing because I'm trying to figure out what it is. I think it's a tail light. Does he tell us what it is in the in the uh, blog? I did not purposely read the caption on this on the site. No, it doesn't say. I think it's a tail light. But either way, um, I dig it. I would crop it tighter on the left, uh, you know, so that the image ends in the lower left hand corner, a little bit of vacant space in the top left. Uh, but other than that, it almost looks like a celestial body. Like, you know, we're on, it's a star and that, that, it, a star getting ready to shoot out some, you know, a, 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 a flare, a flare, a solar flare. Yeah. 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 Like a solar flare. I see that. That's great. <laughs> <laughs> oh, that is, that is so true. Yeah. It totally looks like that. Right. It's just about to, and, and that solar flare is so large that the earth could fit inside <laughs> of it. <laughs> 12 times. I'm trying to say that in my David Attenborough voice. <laughs> yeah. The solar flare is so large. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, maybe oh you know what I I uh, I looked at the the image on Twip where he submitted it as well and it is cropped in the lower left corner just see this is a reason to put a key line around it because I didn't know the image ended there because it's on black on black oh yeah yeah well you he didn't know that the image would be displayed on black <laughs> right so, you should oh, always assume. on the other hand yeah you know Boy Scouts be prepared you should assume that it may be displayed on black so maybe a slight little key line to show the border would make sense Yep, there you go. There yeah. you go. Huh. Very cool. Very cool image. Finally a reason for a border. Okay, cool. <laughs> <laughs> all right. All right. We're getting somewhere here. Well, Craig Stanfield, man, thank you so much. 
You know, by the way, speaking of Craig Stanfield, you know he infected uh, Peter Levshin and Mark Charette with his haircut. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're all, they're all, it's like triplets now. So. Yeah. Yeah. All right. So next shot up is from Eric Pronsky. Look at this. This is alien looking. It is. It's like, it's like, is this an eye of something or, a, or, or a tentacle or a foot or, you know, mm-hmm. um, I love the presentation though. I mean, I love how it's, it's, we've got the monochromatic tone in there. We've got our focus point is, you know, upper third, which is nice for composition. The leading lines are working. There's a background, you know, foreground, middle ground, background kind of thing going on. Um, really well done. Yeah, it looks nice. It reminds me of a gestation pod or something for some sort of alien. <laughs> like the top part is going to peel open and a, you know, a face hugger is going to jump out of there. <laughs> oh, man. Or that's like some, like that's some creature under there and all these little white, you know, things are eggs. Yeah. Oh, don't say that. Yeah. No. <laughs> you had to go there. <laughs> well, you went all alien and stuff. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, it's true. That's a cool shot, though. I like it. I like the black and white nature and the shallow depth of field that just sort of draws you in and just like, okay, what's going on here? Yeah, we might maybe could lose a little bit at the bottom. I don't know that. I mean, you know, for me, once once something starts to fall out of focus, there's a point where it doesn't benefit the image to have more just out of focus, right? Yeah. So maybe half of the half of the bokeh out of the bottom, half of the out of the focus, the shallow depth of field there. Yeah. Yeah. I agree. Yeah, yeah. Why, why have so much obscured? You could lose, yeah. lose some of that. Yeah, yeah. Solid image though. Not, not a whole lot to fix. No, Damn. no. Damn. Yeah, I know. Right. Enter some crappy images, people, so we can. <laughs> exactly. <laughs> something to work with here. <laughs> All right. Next shot is also from Ernest. Ernest, by the way, you can only submit one image, but uh, I'm putting both in because you know we're on lockdown and <laughs> all rules yeah. are relaxed now. <laughs> so. A little bit, yeah. yeah. Um, this is really interesting. I, I love the grid pattern in the background. Uh, I definitely love all the reflections in the glass or crystal. Um, I, I, I would play with this for a long time. You know, mm-hmm. just come in super close, do some macro, things like that. I love how it's presented, though. Key line a little heavy, but... Mm-hmm. It's your fault. It's your fault, Troy Miller. You're the one. I know. I, know. <laughs> so. I, I think stuff like this looks really good in black and white. Um, it's like photographing ice. I, I photograph a lot of ice and glass. Mm-hmm. And I just like the patterns that the, the light makes. And when you take the color out of it, it just makes it more gradation of tone as opposed to a color. Yeah. So. Yep, I dig it. You know, it's interesting. Uh, you and I, on many critiques, we talk about how photographs for the most part should tell a story and have a hero in it and all that stuff. But it, this is just goes to show that there are no rights and wrongs in the world of photography. I was watching one of my favorite YouTubers, uh, Sean Tucker. You ever watch his channel? Mm-hmm. Yep. Yeah. So he was talking about that story in photographs and how not every photograph needs to have a story to it. You know, sometimes it can just stand on its own and be the, the, the photograph captured that's that slice of, humanity or beauty or abstractness right. just for the sake of capturing it versus it being part of some overall narrative. So, yeah. No, I agree. Yeah, mm-hmm. absolutely. Absolutely. Yep. Cool stuff. All right, Ernest. Hey, next shot's from me. Look at that. Oh, nice. This was me experimenting. I said this in the post. This was me experimenting with Luminar for sky replacement. So yeah, this yeah. this was shot on a relatively overcast day, and I brought it in the luminar and pumped everything up on the colors on the flag and threw a one of their <laughs> stock skies back there is just to see what it would do. <laughs> yeah, it you know, it pretty it, well. It does some some images not so well, right? I mean, it's like every image is going to be different, but yeah. some images it's fantastic. Yeah. So yeah, yeah it failed. Cool. It failed. I did some shots of. Uh, I live in an area with a bunch of you know those giant high tech windmills. And yep. I did a shot of a windmill uh, on a hill, on a rolling hill, um, kind of a, you know, relatively boring sky behind it. And I was thinking, yeah, this will probably be a good, a good candidate for a sky replacement. Ran that thing through Luminar 4 and its AI could not mask around the windmill 
for some reason. It was like chopping oh, it weird. off and it was just, you know, it was weird. It was interesting. It's like, okay. So you clearly, you know where the sky is, but this windmill, which is a white geometric structure in the foreground, it couldn't mask around it. So maybe it, maybe the AI saw it as clouds or something like maybe, that. Maybe. Yeah. Maybe. Ooh, yeah. Yeah. It was interesting. Cause I, I've never seen it fail before until then it failed on that particular image. Look at you. Code breaker. Code hey, break. yeah, I'm helping him improve the software, <laughs> man. Come on. Yeah, yeah, it's very cool. I love, I love the image. One thing I really do like about this is how the the point of the pole and then the flag come to you know an intersection at the top of the third of the image. So yeah. it feels like it's pointing into the sky. Yeah, and it's got a nice fold and and stuff into the image. I mean, into the flag. So I dig it. Thank That's you. very cool. Very yeah, cool. Yeah, this this the shot was originally horizontal. I rotated it 90 degrees to the right. <laughs> to make it appear to be pointing into the sky and then since yeah. i since you know so which which would have meant the original shot the uh the clouds were wrong right so <laughs> yeah yeah so this shot i put correct clouds in the correct orientation to co completely sell the idea that it is in the correct orientation so. right good use of composition there you go there you go fun stuff all right next shot is from james glennie I dig, I dig this shot. Um, when he, when he first posted it, I was looking at the thumbnail that I, you know, I went into it and I like it as a thumbnail and I like it as a big image. And that's a, there's a difference, right? Cause sometimes you look at thumbnails and you're like, Oh, that's really cool. And then you make it big. You're like, mm, it's not that exciting. Mm -hmm. Um, this is one of those images that I, I really enjoy and I'm not exactly sure where it's at or what it is or what the reflections are, but I like the blue and the red, the contrast that's in there, the play of light and shadow. You know, the light, dark light, and then that red in there. It's great. Yeah. 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 It's, it's the abstract. And the whole idea of these abstracts is to make you think. And the the other idea right. was, because these are homebound abstracts, was that, you know, there, there are shots everywhere. You know, it doesn't, you don't have to travel yep. to Botswana to get a stunning shot. You could travel to your bathroom. Right, right. I, I, I probably would have burned down the top of the image, though, a little bit to keep your eyes in the frame more. Mm -hmm. So then it was more dark light, dark, and then lighter. And that way your your brain stays in the middle and bounces around. So other than that, it's it's really fantastic. I, ho I hope there's a series of all of these images we're looking at. I hope there's a series out there somewhere because yeah. the, they really would be well done in a, in a series. Yep. Yeah, maybe we should do that in a couple of weeks. Like, you know, you have to, we should do a triptych contest. Oh, that would be amazing. Uh -huh. Yeah, we have to submit three images. Yep, that are related. Ooh, maybe our next topic? Yeah, I like that. All right, okay, save that okay. to the end. That's our cliffhanger uh, I'm for the excited. I'm excited now. <laughs> <laughs> triptych. All right, next shot is from Jim Peters. Look at this. Again with the celestial bodies. When I look at this, I see Mars that's been terraformed as an atmosphere around Mars there. <laughs> yeah, I don't, I, I, I see Petri dish. Oh, I see, okay. Uh, you know, like, like foam. Um, I, I don't know. I, I zoomed, you know, to, to, to be honest, I, I zoomed in on it to try to figure out what it was. I have no <laughs> idea. I mean, maybe it's a sponge or something. It uh, could be a white styrofoam cup that's filled with, cherry snow oh cone. you know what that's what it is <laughs> i'm going with that yeah yep. it's cherry yep. snow cone in a white styrofoam cup is what i see i love it i love it a key line would be super helpful um because it's black on black um but i i i don't know i don't know what to add right mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah it's very simple it's very simple which is which is the point again this would be an interesting triptych right <laughs> like different versions of this shot very Andy Warhol, you mm -hmm, know, just, mm -hmm. just something so mundane. And yet I, I love it. Yeah. Yeah. Very cool shot. Very cool. See, All right, the, the, the TWIP community hit it out of the park on abstracts. They did. Yeah. Speaking of hitting it out of the park, look at this one, Karen Sweeney. I like this shot a lot. I like this shot because it's industrial uh, it could be anything. Uh, who knows what this is, right? What, where this comes from? It could be something in the kitchen. Could be some article of clothing. Who knows? Um, but it just it looks the rivets on it. Just I can yeah. I can see this big 
you know, with a with a fifty thousand dollar price tag on it. <laughs> <laughs> right, right. What? what I, I want to know what that is. I I think it's awesome. I love the tonality of that. I'm glad that it was definitely monochrome. Yeah. Uh, I think that really helps a whole lot. So, I don't know. I, I I've got to know what it is. You know what it what it reminded me of was um, a, a Dalek. You know, from Doctor Who, oh, the Daleks. Yeah, mm-hmm. yeah, vaguely, they got the, vaguely, vaguely. Yeah, they've got they've got the bubbly, you know, outside shell. So, mm-hmm. um, I I'm really glad that the dimples are all within the frame and that there's none of them are cut off. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it you know, and I think that that's important because it it holds our. If they were tighter, maybe that would be good. So, yeah. I, I I enjoy the the inner the, what she did with the light right so the the interplay of the hot spot on the right side and the the deep shadow on the left I kind of like that and the fact that we're getting different catch lights on each one of these little uh, things you know rivets or whatever those are you know right it's just it's really interesting now I'd imagine this is tiny whatever this is it's probably really tiny and we'll never know exactly what it was. <laughs> Yeah, I'd love to know what it is, but yeah, I think you're right. It it does it could be tiny, mm-hmm. um, just from the scratches and yeah, the texture. From the, the, surface, scr- the texture you know. is leading me to think that this is this is really small. Yeah, again, I I hope this is another image that's in a series because mm-hmm. you could you could you could print this series, and it would just go anywhere. Yeah, yeah. that's great. Yep. Very nice. So far, a wedding photographer, none of these shots I, I see a bride in. I'm just saying. <laughs> no. Maybe no. the one that you put in here. But <laughs> no, 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 no. It's, you know, it's all stuff from the home. Yeah. yeah, for sure. All right. Karen Sweeney, thank you. All right. The next shot up is from Lamb. Yeah, this is really nice. Yeah. Definitely abstract. Yeah, motion blur on the train back there. Everything in the foreground, including that fence grate thing, is yep. uh, tack sharp. Very nice. Yeah, and I really appreciate that Lamb took the time to you know compose uh, cleanly so that your horizontal and vertical lines are nearly perfect. So you know that was one of the things that I'm sure he had to walk up to this screen and kneel and get perfectly centered and take time, and that's intentional. Mm-hmm. And those are things that that I think make an image better versus something that's just you know a snapshot. Mm-hmm. So yeah, yeah. Yeah, very cool. Very cool image. I'm I'm wondering if he did this handheld or if he did it with a with a tripod. I, I would assume you could do it handheld. That train probably moves fast enough. Mm-hmm. Well, depending on the camera, right? And, and yeah. The the image stabilization superpowers. Well, this is true. Yeah. So again, this is one of those kind of images that I just I just love and adore, and I I want to look at it. And I don't really have a lot to add. He's mm-hmm. it's he's made it nearly perfect, right? So, yeah. Yeah, for sure. Nice colors. Good job, yeah. Lamb. Look at that. Good job, Lamb. All right. Next shot, Mark Harris. <laughs> <laughs> we talked about this a little bit. You love we this did. image. <laughs> we did. I, Anything I did with a cat this. in it, you love. <laughs> I know. I know. It's 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 crazy. Um, I do dig this image because I think this is also one of those images that are are very very close to home. Mm-hmm. So you know it's like a it's like a iPhone charging cable and it's the rug and then there's the animal and I just I just think it feels very cozy. It's very clever. It's really cool. Yeah, wouldn't be the same without the tail. Yeah, yeah, that's interesting. Yeah, I like it. it it's it's definitely abstract and you could you could infer a lot of stories from what's going on here like i'm sure you play with your cat with a piece of string every now and then right oh yeah uh, yeah torture yeah. torture the cat with a string yep yeah yep i love it cool mark harris thanks man nice yeah not a lot to do to that one either no not at all speaking of not a lot to do here's michael deray's asteroid shot look at that <laughs> i like it <laughs> I'm guessing that's a luminar, a little luminar flare in there. But see that the fact that we have to say that and call that out. I wonder. I wonder if that's just an affliction that that photographers have, right? So yeah, you know, well, a normal layperson would look at this and like, wow, that's amazing. How'd you get those streaks in there? But photographers, you know, look at it. Little luminar four. You put that. Yeah, in there. but but like you know, it'd be like Gordon Ramsay goes out to dinner and he's like, oh, that's definitely frozen chicken, right? Like, I mean, yeah. he knows, right? right like, right. he can tell and it matters. Um, and so when we look at images, because, you know, we're in, I'm in imagery, you know, four or five hours a day, every day, editing and, you know, building stuff and doing what I'm doing. 
I, this is this is how I see the world. I see things edited. I see them, you know, dissected in pieces and parts. Yeah. And so, um, but it doesn't take away from the fact that it's a, a very creative, very cool looking image. I like that. I, I want like to know what this is. What is this exactly? Obviously, those are some sort of crystals on there, but what? I don't. I don't know. I think you should put lighter fluid on it and light it on fire. <laughs> You say that about everything. Right? <laughs> I do, because it's cool as heck. <laughs> Burning things. I love it. <laughs> All right, Michael Duray, thanks, man, for that asteroid. Let us know in the, in the in the community what this is. I'm curious. Yeah, we everybody got to tell us what what this stuff is. You yeah. know, if it's not obvious. <laughs> yeah, I know it's not. Like this one is not obvious from Rick Kilboy. Ah. <sighs> Mm. I think I know what it is. What is it? What do you think? I, I think it's a piece of sandpaper. Oh, with a hole in it. Yeah. So if you have a palm sander, uh, they have holes in them to suck in the dust. Oh. Now, now maybe that's just because I just built a shelf the other day. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> so I used some. <laughs> so, um, but I, I do love the texture. I, I think if we wanted to get more uh, alien-esque, uh, it should be tighter. Mm. and throw like some tighter, stars. tighter on the on the the hole there to make it more mysterious yeah because the 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 light dome on the right really doesn't make any sense if you want to take me out of the real world and take me into sort of like a fantasy because it feels like it could be a mars landscape or something yeah, right like for that's sure. a crater yep. yeah so take out that white light thing on the on the right leave it tilted because that could be like the curve of the earth or the planet and then throw some stars in there Mm-hmm. Yeah. Oh, in Luminar, you can put uh, a moon in there. Or an aurora, whatever you want. Or an aurora. <laughs> or a giraffe. Or, yeah, or a hot air balloon. <laughs> or, or birds. <laughs> or lightning. Or lightning. <laughs> or all of them. I was doing all that last night, man. I, I was know. like... <laughs> I was too. I was like, uh, and, and I said, I'm to, it felt like, you know, those kind of images. I don't know what it is. Maybe it's it's just, you know, uh, I don't want to say purist or purism or whatever the word is, but it just felt like uh, like like a celebrity with too much plastic surgery. Right? You just, <laughs> you know, something's not right there, but it looks good. But, you know, it's not right. <laughs> it's just not natural. It's not right. Natural. Yeah. Yeah. You got to you got to go out and shoot your own birds mm -hmm. and then use them in there. Yeah. Yeah. Maybe that's it. Yeah. Especially since you, I keep seeing that same flock of birds. Yeah, everywhere. The same. <laughs> it's like, man, those birds really know how to fly in yeah. formation everywhere they go. They're like the blue angels. <laughs> that's right. Yeah. Yeah. All right. Next, African uh, swap. next shot is from Stephen Scharf. Look at that. This is, this is beautiful. And I know there's got to be a story behind this watch, too. It's, you know. Yeah. It's, yeah, it's got some special properties, Stephen. You have to tell us what the special properties of the Sin watch are. Right, right. Uh, beautiful image. Two things come to mind right away um, that I, I'm I'm struggling with is I wish the highlights were a little bit more specular, mm -hmm. and I'm not sure I like. I feel like the watch is upside down. That was the thing I would have said. Yeah, the inversion. Obviously, he he did that intentionally. But, sure. But yeah, the, my brain, at least, I don't know about everybody else's, but my brain wants to see words, you know, closer to the proper orientation uh, for, and, uh, for the particular language that they're in, I guess. Yeah. I mean, if you were to crop it so that you didn't see the name or the dates, right, like just the top left corner, mm -hmm. um, there's definitely enough resolution in there, just the hand and the crown and then the bezel. I would love that as well. So it's a fantastic image. And I'm sure, you know, it took a lot of time focus stacking, a lot of meticulous work in there. Uh, very, very, very clean. Yeah, it's a wonderful image. Yeah, and I want to know the story of this watch, too, Stephen. You got to share. Either share now or share it at Friday's member mixer or what the, what's magical about this watch. Or is it just a watch? You know, so. Yeah. Yeah. Cool. Stephen yeah. Scharf. Thank you, sir. Very cool. All right. Next shot up is from Troy Miller, who likes burning beautiful things. <laughs> <laughs> Why would you set this poor? Assuming this is real, this is real, hundred percent, right? Oh yeah, hundred percent. You squirted yeah. this poor innocent flower with lighter fluid and lit it on fire. No, I willed it to burst into flame. 
No. Yeah. <laughs> of course I doused it in lighter fluid. Or the, um, I just, you know, it's it, it, to me, I like the mixture of things that are different. Like, you know, we don't we don't expect to see these two elements together and then photographed in in a in a portrait intentional style. Yeah. So I just love things like that. I love things that are that are different. And I clearly should have put a key line on it. Because... Thank you. I would, thank you for calling yourself out, <laughs> calling everybody else out for not putting a key line on a black image. <laughs> I did it. Yeah. See, now we're now we want our images to stand out. We're going to be getting good at key lines and mats uh-huh yeah yeah so. just know this is probably the way they'll be shown from now on which defaults to a black background so <laughs> you know if you want it to show up you know and you want us to know where the borders of your image are key line right. or otherwise if it's right. on black right. if it's all black but you know Im- images like this um i did this for fun because i thought it would be a fun image to show in the critique and then because of this now i have this whole series of images that i created that i'm actually gonna use as as a fine art submission pieces what, what would um, you call this the f- flaming beauty uh fire is nice fire is nice <laughs> All right, all right. I don't know. I'm not good at naming stuff. <laughs> I love it. I love it. I could name this. I come up with some clever for it. Wait, what kind of are those daisies? I have no idea what they are. I don't know. They're in the yard. I have a whole bunch of them. I would say flaming daisy right there. <laughs> <laughs> I, I I purposely and so if you see more of my flowers, I purposely burnt the the deader ones, the ones that were on their way out, um, as opposed to like picking the best ones. Oh, okay, I got it. Got it. Poor flowers. Yeah. Age discrimination. <laughs> <laughs> All right. Moving right along here. Next shot. Oh, that was it. Was that it? Is that it? Oh, that that's it. it. Yeah. I think that's it. Well, we went through all of them. That went quick. Man, so what, what do you think? You have a favorite out of all those? I have a favorite. I'm, I'm, I'm looking at them, and um, I think it's got to be dimples. Dimples or bumps? Domes? Yeah. The, yeah. This one from Karen <laughs> Sweeney, right? Yeah, the day like the Daleks. Yes, I like this one too. I like I like the simplicity of it. I mean, there you know we could have picked any one of these as winner, but you got to pick one. So true that. Yeah, yeah. I, I like this one. The simplicity of it is really cool. I like the black and whiteness. I like the the fact that it draws me in and makes me think about the size of it and what this thing is, which a lot of them do. You know, make us yep. think of what they are. But I like I just like the I'm a I'm a sucker for simplicity, I guess. Yeah, it's very simple. Um, even even like, you know, how the image is created and the fact that the dimples are well placed, like I said before, the one in the back left corner, the highlight, probably because it's on Mighty, the highlight is is hot. Mm-hmm. So we just need to take it down just a tad. But um, even with that, it's it's fantastic. Yeah, it's yeah. a great image. Cool. Well, congratulations, Karen Sweeney. You are this week's favorite. And, winner, um, winner, 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 chicken dinner. What, yeah. uh, what, uh, what do you think next week should be? So we did a, we did some foreshadowing triptych. We, we did. And it's, it's, uh, things in the fridge, things in the fridge from the fridge. Isn't that what we, we said from the fridge, from the fridge. So, yes. A triptych yeah. though. That's the spin on it. A triptych. Yeah. So three images, um, should they, should they, put the images together in a triptych or should they just submit three separate no they should be the final image should be the triptych with three images in it okay so the final image is one image but with three three versions yep. in it so yeah not, i gotta think of what separate I images you gotta figure out how to do that that's easy. i gotta figure out what i have to what i'm gonna light on fire yeah. <laughs> that's you're gonna run out of stuff eventually this this quarantine better end soon man <laughs> <laughs> tracy be like Hmm, the house. <laughs> Maybe we'll, yeah. let's burn the house down. Uh, right. Does that burn? Or yeah. I could light an Apple Watch on fire. There you go. Anything will burn, given enough heat. Anything, yeah, Anything. yeah, Anything. yeah. So yeah, from the fridge as a triptych. All right, cool. People, you heard it. You heard it here first. Triptych from the fridge. This week's winner is Karen Sweeney with her... Um, Yay. What do we call it? What, what did you say? What's a Doctor Who... Day deck, the 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 Daleks, the D A L E K X, the, the Daleks, Daleks. Yeah, I don't know the Daleks. Daleks. The Daleks. <laughs> All right, we'll do that, and we'll leave <laughs> we'll leave it right there. Cool. So for Twip uh, critique number one hundred seven, it is from the fridge triptych. Cool. From the fridge. All right, man. Yep. Well, thanks a lot. You stay safe down there in Southern California. Man. All right, you too. All right, see you later. This 
is Twitter.